Mosquito season in Georgia typically runs through September and sometimes longer depending on the weather. There have already been confirmed human cases of the West Nile virus and confirmed travel related cases of Zika. So the threat to pregnant women and their children is very real. Joining us to discuss the danger is the director of the Georgia Department of Environmental Health, Dr. Chris Rustin. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Rustin. Thank you for having me. So what's the latest update on Zika and West Nile virus in Georgia and in the U.S.? Well, the good news is with Zika is that the numbers have been declining. Uh, in Georgia in 2016, we had 114 travel-related cases that we confirmed. And in 2017, we only have five travel-related cases. And so we've seen in Georgia the number of cases drop dramatically as well as across the country they've dropped dramatically, which is the good news for us. It's still a risk to the public. We want to uh, make sure that we, we state that, that, that people who travel to endemic countries, especially pregnant women or women of pregnant barren, pregnancy barren age, take the proper precautions. Um, but it has decreased dramatically. However, for West Nile virus, the bad news is, is that we've seen a marked increase in the number of human cases of West Nile virus. Currently, we have 14 confirmed cases of West Nile virus, um, and we suspect that number is going to increase because we have a lot of cases that are pending. In addition to that, we've had three people die from West Nile virus this year, and so it's very serious um, that the public is aware that this virus is circulating across the state, um, and there's certain things that they can do to prevent themselves uh, from being bitten. All right, so let's talk about that. What can people do to protect themselves and their families from Zika and West Nile? Well, first of all, I mean, we can start off with a very, very basic uh, prevention message, and that's when you're out and about uh, doing, you know, yard chores or you're out enjoying the evening to wear mosquito repellent. These types of mosquitoes um, that transmit uh, Zika virus are the types of mosquitoes that uh, bite during the daytime, but the mosquitoes that transmit West Nile virus are more prevalent at dawn and, and dusk. And so really and truly, any time of the day you're out, there's a potential for being bitten. So wear uh, a long clothes if you can to cover exposed skin or wear mosquito repellent on exposed skin that contains DEET and that is one primary prevention way that you can reduce your, your chances of being bitten. And so what are some of the symptoms? I mean how would someone know if they had Zika or West Nile virus? So the symptoms are very, for both the viruses are very similar to flu. Uh, so you've got flu-like symptoms such as a headache, achy joints, achy body, um, to more serious symptoms for West Nile virus such as stiff neck, blurred vision, uh, dizziness. Um, and so the symptoms are very similar to flu and if you think that you've got one of these particular viruses and have concerns, we want you to talk to your primary care physician um, and then they can make a decision on whether or not they think you need to be tested and work with public health to facilitate that. Where can we go to get more information? We can get more information at our website, dph.ga.gov slash Zika, or at dph.ga.gov slash environmental health. And on this website, you will find our tip and toss campaign, which is really focused on reducing the number of mosquitoes that lay eggs in containers around your home, such as buckets, flower pots, bird baths. We recommend that you tip and toss and that you do this weekly to reduce the number of mosquitoes around your home, which will reduce the chances of you being bitten as well. Dr. Chris Rustin, great information there. Thank Thank you so much for sharing it with us Thank today on Coffee with America.